Hello and welcome to my workbench. To, today we'll be looking at a DepthNet transmitter I've been working on in the last couple of months. Uh, so DepthNet is basically an amateur radio paging network uh, that allows to connect together various transmitters and relay messages between them. Um, so the endpoints are the transmitters themselves. It, it can be, for instance, an MMDVM hotspot, which usually supports that technology, and you can just tune it to the right frequency and have your pager, and whenever there's a message that's destined to you and you're in range of a page uh, of the of a transmitter, your uh, pager will uh, ring with the message uh, that was sent. So. Um, it's a very old technology, but it has been updated with more modern um, broadband uh, capabilities. And I won't go into much details about the network itself. I'm just going to talk about this endpoint here, which is a high power uh, transmitter, um, high power read above 10 milliwatts uh, compared to the hotspots. So that's around 25 watts. Although I'm running it on reduced power right now uh, for testing purposes because it's not connected to any antenna, I just have a dummy load uh, back there for now. So basically, um, if you have your phone and you have an app uh, that uh, connects to the network and you can send um, send a message here, it doesn't pick up right on camera, but I'm specifying my call sign and that I'm enable all the Belgian transmitters. I don't need to enable all worldwide because I'm staying in Belgium here. So just press send. Um, so now the message was sent and my pager just uh, picked up the message transmitted by uh, the network. So it went to the network, came back to my unit and it keyed the radio, transmitted the tones and was picked up by the pager. Um, so it works pretty well and I uh, wanted to show what I uh, did here for my own build. As you can see on the outside it uses a ham radio uh, transceiver here which is a Yezu here, uh, Yezu FT7800 uh, dual band VHF UHF although I'm just using it on one single UHF frequency. We generally agreed upon using 439.9875 megahertz. Um, so yeah, the transceiver itself, uh, two LEDs, so you saw that one coming off and on, uh, which is a transmit LED, and this one is a simple power LED, power switch. Uh, we'll look at the back right now, so I'm going to shut it off. It uses a Raspberry Pi internally, uh, although uh, the, um, it uses a RAM disk mod, so it doesn't write that much on the SD card, and the uh, harsh power on and offs aren't that bad to the SD card, and I have a backup in case. Uh, it fails anyway. So let's disconnect the power and disconnect the network cable and we'll look at the back. So at the back it's nothing that much uh, fancier. You've got an Ethernet jack to connect it to the network although it has internal Wi-Fi but I would not bet on it uh, when it's inside a 19 inch, inch uh, rack all metal. Uh, a screw post uh, for powering the thing painted in one red. Doesn't pick up that much on camera uh, but it's uh, slightly red, so you know which one is positive, which one isn't. Um, and you've got um, the um, antenna connector with the dummy load right now, so I'll just disconnect it so you see basically an end connector here. So let's have a look inside. I already removed the screws. So as you can see, the case itself is a 19-inch uh, rack case, plastic one. You can find them on um, Element 14 or RS for pretty cheap. Uh, Farnell, sorry. Um, I think it's about around 20, 20 euros for, for one of those and that's a 2U two, two design. So if we open the case, uh, the top case holds, have, holds everything together so the front panel will come off uh, easily and same for the back panel. So if we remove this we can take a look. We can take a look inside. So I'll just bring the camera closer so we can get a closer look. Focus. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what do we have here? I'll just okay push the panel. Um, you have here um, Raspberry Pi with a custom um, PCB on top. I'll go back to this in a couple seconds. Uh, power supply, which is which converts the 13.8 volts power supply to 5 volts for the um, Raspberry Pi. So that's a cheap. 
uh, cheap module you can find on eBay for a couple of dollars. And everything is, is mounted to a 3D printed plate. Um, so with a brass insert, so you can just screw it on, it doesn't move anymore. So that's for the, um, uh, well, the logic and the um, connection to the network. Right next to it, I'll just pan the camera. Right next to it, you've got the transceiver itself. Nothing too fancy, so the control head is on the front, but the transceiver is here on the back. And uh, if you come here, you can see the um, power di distribution. It's just a perf board with screw posts and the cables coming in and on uh, out to redirect all the um, all the 13.8 power supply to all. Uh, the uh, the things that need it and well the LEDs I won't show that not really that uh, interesting um, what I plan on adding as it will be into a 19 inch rack with a 20 I think around 20% duty cycle maximum I think it needs more cooling so I'll be adding probably a blower fan to get some air circulating through the unit for the um, PCB so uh, as you can see, it's got a transformer here and a sound card, USB sound card here. So basically, uh, at the beginning, this was designed as a radio interface for, you know, uh, half duplex operation. You've got an input and an output. So we've got two transformers, the USB sound card, octocouplers, and basically, well, you just hooked up the radio to the terminals here, set that on the Raspberry Pi, and connected the USB um, to uh, well to the computer. Here, uh, for this case, we just use the transmitting part, so there's no receiver, uh, we don't need it, and this goes straight to the back of the Yezu radio, so you can get the pinouts on the manual of the radio, you just connect it through, adjust the levels, and you're good to go. So that's pretty much it, that's a build I made for friends that's going to install it here in Belgium. And uh, yeah, I'll be seeing how uh, how it performs, um, especially with this kind of pagers that use an internal antenna that needs a lot of electric field to pick up the signal and decode it. So I'm curious to see how well it will perform in the future. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time.